Good evening, visitors. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony, which today commemorates the 50th anniversary of the attack on fire support base Balmoral during the Vietnam War. My name is Richard Cruz, and joining us today from the Australian Army is Lieutenant Colonel Richard Maurice. We warmly welcome the family of Private Lindsay Noel Brown, whose story will be told shortly. We're honoured to acknowledge Major General Jake Elwood, Deputy Chief of Army, representing the Chief of Army, Australia. Mr Ken Foster, National President of the Vietnam Veterans Association of Australia. And Mr John King, President, ACT Branch of the Returned and Services League of Australia. Today, we are particularly honoured to welcome the Vietnam veterans who fought in the Battle of Coral Balmoral. We are proud of you and sincerely thank you for your service and your sacrifice. We're honoured to welcome Colonel Mick Bindley on behalf of the veterans of the 1st Battalion Royal Australian Regiment, Brigadier John Robbins on behalf of the veterans of the 3rd Royal Australian Regiment, and Mr Noel McLaughlin, Chairman, Royal Australian Armoured Corps Corporation. We welcome the veterans who have served, those that are still serving, and the families that love and support them. We acknowledge the members of RSL and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria and RSL Queensland, who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, wreaths will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by family and visitors to the memorial. Australia's Federation Guard is a tri-service ceremonial unit of the Australian Defence Force. They provide a ceremonial presence at civil and military events and during visits to Australia by foreign dignitaries. The Guard will now dismount the catafalque party from the tomb of the unknown Australian soldier within the Hall of Memory.
Today, we commemorate the 50th anniversary of the, of the attack on Fire Support Patrol Base Balmoral, or FSB Balmoral. 50 years ago today, soldiers of the 1st Australian Task Force fought the most sustained and argu arguably most hazardous battles of the Vietnam War, confronting regimental sized formations of the North Vietnamese Regular Army in fierce actions around FSB Coral and Balmoral in Benoit Province, north of Saigon. FSB Coral was established on the 12th of May in an area known to contain infiltration routes used by the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese Armed Forces. The enemy had attacked Saigon during the Communist Second General Offensive and was expected to use these routes when withdrawing. FSB Coral's defences were unfinished when it was attacked in the early hours of the 13th of May. 11 Australians were killed and 28 wounded, while the attackers lost more than 52 bodies that were left behind. Operations continued in the area for almost four weeks as the Australians fought some of the largest and most sustained battles of the Vietnam War. Further casualties occurred during patrol clashes and Coral again came under attack, first from a North Vietnamese Army force estimated at three battalions strong and later from further rocket and mortar barrages. On the 26th of May, 50 years ago today, Enemy efforts were focused on FSB Balmoral, which had been established about five kilometres north of SS FSB Coral. The defenders threw back the assault and after another early morning attack on the 28th of May, the North Vietnamese had once again been defeated. This assault was the first attempt to remove the first Australian task force from the area and there were no further assaults on FSB Coral or Balmoral. Today we remember the attack, the attack on FSB Balmoral. We pay our respects to the men and women commemorated here on the Roll of Honour and to the survivors who returned home. As is tradition with the last post ceremony, just one story will be told this evening. However, I will now read the names and acknowledge all those who lost their lives in the Battle of Coral Balmoral. Private Errol John Bailey, 13th of May, 1968, aged 23. Corporal Robert Bernard Hickey, 13th of May, 1968, aged 24. Sergeant Peter Edward Lewis, 13th of May, 1968, aged 24. Private Robert Leo McNabb, 13th of May, 1968, age 20. Private John Alfred O'Brien, 13th of May, 1968, age 21. Gunner Christopher James Sortell, 13th of May, 1968, age 19. Gunner Ian James Scott, 13th of May, 1968, age 21. Private Lawrence Rodney Shepherd, 13th of May, 1968, age 22. Private Bevan Maxwell Trimble, 13th of May, 1968, age 21. Private Richard Christopher A. Watson, 13th of May, 1968, age 20. Corporal John Hunter Witten, 13th of May, 1968, age 28. Corporal Ian Kenneth Dawson, 14th of May, 1968, age 24. Private Christopher Robert Nisbet, 14th of May, 1968, age 20. Corporal John Gregory Stinson Pierce, 14th of May, 1968, age 22. Lance Corporal William Henry Martin, 16th of May, 1968, age 22. Private Alan John Wallace, 16th of May, 1968, age 21. Private Harry Winston White, 16th of May, 1968, age 23. Signalman Alexander Henry Young, 16th of May, 1968, age 21. Private Brian Thomas Young, 16th of May, 1968, 
age 21. Major George Alfred Constable, 23rd of May, 1968, age 32. Private Lindsay Noel Brown, 26th of May, 1968, age 22. Private Alan John Cooper, 26th of May, 1968, age 20. Private John Walter Desnoy, 26th of May, age 22. Private William Malcolm Thomas, 26th of May, 1968, age 21. Private Geoffrey Thomas Wall, 28th of May, 1968, age 21. Private Dell Edward Abbott, 30th of May, 1968, age 21. I ask you to please stand and join in singing the national anthem. If anyone's able to be seated, please do so. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's first World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozieres, France, in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn loved ones buried in faraway places. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved, and here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we'll read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and operations for more than a century. But first, we present a lament, flowers of the forest. Wreaths and floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today, we remember and pay tribute to Private Lindsay Noel Brown. Lindsay Brown was born on the 25th of December, 1945, in Bendigo, Victoria, to Norman and Elizabeth Brown. When Lindsay was still quite young, his family moved to a farming property called Glen Alvey at Upper Lurg near Benella. Here he attended the local primary school before going on to Benella Technical College. He left school after gaining his intermediate technical certificate in 1961, and the following year went to work for B.V. Reynolds Chains as an apprentice fitter and turner. As part of his apprenticeship, he returned to Benella Technical College for the study component of his trade. He gained his qualification in 1964 and continued his apprenticeship until January 1967 when he qualified as a fitter and turner. Just before finishing his trade certificate, Brown met his future wife, Lorraine, and the pair began a relationship. He was an earnest young man and was keen to get married and settle down. He remained working with his employer and being mechanically minded, enjoyed working on his own car in his spare time. The Australian government had introduced national service in 1964 and with the decision to commit ground troops to Vietnam in 1965, the Australian army began expanding. Brown attended a pre-enlistment medical screening in late October 1966 and was passed fit. On the 1st of February 1967, Brown enlisted for two years national service. His enlistment papers were stamped potential officer and he was noted as being a polite, well-dressed lad and a decent type. After basic training at the second recruit training battalion at Pakapanil, he was posted to the School of Infantry at Singleton. Completing his infantry training in June, he was posted to the 3rd Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment, which was based at Woodside in South Australia, and joined Delta Company. As the battalion was ready for deployment to Vietnam, the training was intense. During his last period of leave, home at, to Benalla, on the 11th of November, Lindsay and Lorraine were married. He was 21 years old, Lorraine was 18. Brown celebrated his 22nd birthday and Christmas before flying out of Adelaide for Vietnam. Landing at Vang Tau, Brown and the other members of the 3rd Battalion Rear Party joined the main battalion and were taken by trucks to Nui Dat. 3 RAI conducted its first operation in early January 1968 and over the next four months was involved in operations including mine clearing and reconnaissance in force. Brown returned to Australia and spent a week in Sydney on leave at the beginning of April, but was soon back in the field on operations. On the 12th of May, the 3rd Battalion Royal Australian Regiment, along with the 1st Battalion, 102 Field Battery, and other supporting units, was flown to a position 25 kilometres north of Bien, correction, Bien Hoa, where they set up fire support base Coral, tasked with disrupting enemy troops withdrawing from Saigon after a major offensive. Fire support base Coral was attacked the same night and the Australians suffered nine killed and 28 wounded. Three RAR left Coral and set up fire support base Coogee nearby before being sent to establish fire support base Balmoral on the 24th of May. Defenses were still in the process of being completed when two North Vietnamese Army Main Force regiments launched an attack attempt to overrun the base in the early hours of the 26th of May. Delta Company took the brunt of the initial assault, and during the fierce fighting, Brown was struck in the head by shrapnel and was killed instantly. The soldiers of 3 RAR and the Centurion tanks of the 1st Armored Regiment fired canister rounds and machine guns, forcing the enemy to break and withdraw. Four men from 3 RAR had been killed and a further 14 wounded. Two nights later, 3 RAI held off a second ground assault and suffered a further man killed and six wounded. Brown's remains were returned home and were laid to rest on the 11th of June in the Benella Lawn and Memorial Cemetery. His wife, Lorraine, had the following epitaph added to his headstone. Dearly loved and ever missed, 
by your loving wife, Lorraine. Lindsey Brown was 22 years old. His name is listed on the roll of honor to my left, along with more than 500 others from the Vietnam War. His photograph is displayed today besides the pool of reflection. We now remember Private Lindsey Noel Brown, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms, and in the hope of a better world. I ask you to please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli with his poor, tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well, it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes this evening's last post ceremony. We thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial and wish you all a very good evening. Thank you. <laughs>